Welcome to a new video. So today's topic is uh, about row-based workflows. So working on rows can be difficult uh, with R. And the reason is that, um, I, I think there's two reasons for that. First of all, people have either the uh, spreadsheet model in their heads, and they when they look at data, they see spreadsheets, or um, they have the matrix, matrix, matrix model in their head. So when they look at the data frame, they think it's a matrix. And if you look at data and if you see a matrix or if you see a spreadsheet, you might not really understand why it's so difficult to work on a per row basis with R. What I mean by that is that you want, for example, to um, you have some, so you have your data frame with, with rows and you want to apply a function on each element of uh, that row and you want to do that on a per row basis, okay? So I'll illustrate with an example so it will make th things clear. The thing is, a data frame is neither a, ma a, ma a matrix, matrix nor a spreadsheet. So you can't really apply uh, this mental model to the data frame. A data frame is basically a list, okay? Let's take a look. Um, oh, by the way, before we continue, the, the whole script uh, is, you can find it in the description below. So there's a link, click it and you will get access to the script, so you don't need to be typing everything. Um, so we'll take a look at a data frame where you think you might need to uh, work on a per row basis, but actually you don't. And then we'll look on a, uh, at another da data frame and another example where it could make sense to be working on a per row basis, okay? So this is a bit also what I want to um, discuss, is you should be able to recognize situations where you actually really need to work on a per row basis versus situations where you don't and recognizing these will really help you so let's let's take a look at this um, Johnson data set so this is a data set with quarterly earnings per year from the uh, I guess American company Johnson & Johnson which we now know quite well actually Luxembourg has started receiving some uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccines since I guess two weeks ago now Anyway, um, if you look at that, and if you have this matrix or this spreadsheet mental model in your head, you might look at this and you might think, oh, this is great. Um, I actually want the, I want to look at the average earnings per year. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply call the mean function on each row. It turns out that this is not as uh, straightforward as you might think. And the reason is because this is neither a spreadsheet or is not a spreadsheet application, and this is also not a matrix. If it were a matrix, there is a way to do that easily, but this here is not a matrix, it's a table or a data frame. And a table and a data frame are actually lists, okay? So you can't really apply the same type of logic to, to data frames that you would to a matrix or um, if you were in a spreadsheet application. The problem here is that this is typically a situation where you don't want to work on a per row basis. You might think that you need to do that because you want the average or, or whatever you want, maybe the sum you want to, to get the total. And you, you might want to you look at that and you might think, well, I, I just need to apply this function row by row. Why is that so difficult? I have to write a loop. Uh, I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to transform. I, no. What you need to do is recognize that this is not a tidy data frame, okay? Why is that not a tidy data frame? Because if you look at this, okay, you actually, if you look at this 71 here, you actually have two pieces of information in one cell. Not only do you know that this is the value in 1960, but you also have implicitly the value or the information that this is the value at the first quarter, which is here. But this thing here, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four, this is also, okay, this is this is also observations. These are also observations, and here they, they are playing the role of a variable, which is which is not um, it's not what you want. Okay, this is not a tidy data frame. These are actually values of a variable that you don't see. That is not apparent, it's implicit, but these are values of a variable that you could call quarter. So you would have a variable called quarter, and then you would have quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. So this is not a tidy data frame. And maybe recognizing 
um, that this is not a tidy data frame is not really easy. And I, I don't know if my explanation was really very good, but I guess it takes, it takes practice. Let me show you why um, or how you could uh, cast this into a tidy data frame and then get the answer that you want. So for this, we're going to transform uh, that into, um, let, me, let me save it directly. Um, how should I do that? Yeah, let's let's go with Johnson tidy. I guess it's better to get to have both to, to, to save both. Um, so I start with um, Johnson and Johnson. So I just start with my data set, and what I want is actually to pivot longer. So I want to um, to gather it. Okay, I want to gather these variables. Okay, so let's take a look at pivot longer. So the columns that I want to pivot. Okay are the columns that uh, start with quarter. So let's write that. So calls starts with quarter. Okay, then what I need to do is give this new variable, this implicit variable, give it a name. Okay, so I just told you before, we're going to call it quarter. So I'm going to say that this column's name to a new variable that I call quarter, okay? And now uh, I also have to say, where do the values come from? Okay, so the values, they uh, simply, um, oh no, sorry, the values, we, they come from quarter, so we know that. Now we need just a new column that is called, we can call it uh, earnings, why not? And this is where we're going to put the earnings, okay? And um, this should already be something that could help us out much better. So now this is the tidy version of the data set that we had before. So now each um, year has four rows, okay? And we have three variables with this new variable qu called quarter. So um, in the first year, okay, 1960, quarter one, we have this value. 1960, quarter two, we have this value and so on and so forth. So I hope that now that you see the uh, tidy version of this data frame that it clicked, but if not, well, uh, I guess it really just comes maybe with practice. Um, but once you once you, you see that, you'll recognize immediately data frames that are not tidy. And this is not just, a, this is not an R concept, okay? This is this uh, concept of tidy data frames um, or flat data, uh, flat files, etc. This is something that you you, can find in, for any piece of software, statistical analysis software, and that you really need actually to work with uh, easily. So um, now that I, I have this tidy data frame, I can group by year and I can compute uh, the total or whatever, the average of, of my earnings, it doesn't matter. Now I have my average earnings, okay? So this is, again, a solution uh, or a situation where you actually don't want to work on a per row basis. Because uh, that's actually what you want is to have this average uh, earnings. You actually don't really want to add a new column, okay? So this is, this is also maybe a little trick to help you recognize the situations. What do you actually want to do? Do you just want to look at the average earnings and maybe put them in a table in your paper? Or do you really want to add that as a column, maybe for uh, to do some regression analysis? This is where you might need to actually add this as a column. So now we're going to see that, okay, how would you add this as a column? So before showing you the second data frame, let's um, continue working with this one and let's see how you could, um, how you could work uh, or how, how you could add this column. So this is going to be a bit more complicated. So um, maybe I will just do it and then I'll comment. I guess that's maybe better. So I'm going to start with my, my non, all right, my non tidy data. And I want to add a new column uh, called uh, average earnings that contains the average of the first row and then the average of the second row and so on, okay? So let's, let's take a look. So there is a very cool uh, and uh, useful function in dplyr I think it's dplyr, but it's part of the tidyverse called the row wise. So already this uh, function um, already tells you what you need to know. We're going to work on a per row basis. So apply what's coming row wise. 
what's coming is pretty much um, very. It's pretty much how should I say um, very familiar. Okay, if you if you know tidyverse, so you you just mutate because you want to add a new column, so you mutate. And um, I go with year mean, or I, I'm looking also at my notes at the same time. Might have noticed my eyes. I'm looking at my notes, but let's let's call it average earnings. Now comes uh, your mean function, so that's pretty pretty natural. Now comes the new stuff. Um, we are going to use C across, okay? And I'm going to comment on what this does. Start with quarter. So I just want to take the average of uh, maybe let me um, yeah let, maybe let me write it like this. I just want the average of the columns that start with quarter. I don't want to do the average of every column because then I would also take my year as in the average, which of course doesn't make sense. So let's uh, let's see what comes out of it. And here we get the same stuff as before. And now we get it as a column. Do you really want that as a column into your data? Probably not. Okay, so. That's why I'm saying you need to recognize the situations. Um, but if you want, that's how you would do it. Okay, so why, um, wh what, what's happening? Okay, what's happening? So C across is a function. Oh, and by the way, in the description, I'm going, I'm going to sneeze. No, I'm going to add the um, link to the vignette of across and C across. What I'm showing you here, it's everything is there. Everything is in the vignette. So read the vignette. Uh, it's very well explained, and I'm not showing you anything more. So um, you could stop watching this video right now and go to the vignette. But don't stop watching right now, please. C across. So what does C across do? C across. The way I understand it, and maybe that's totally wrong. Maybe, but it works for me. The way I understand it is that is this is somehow uh, very similar to the C function that you know just puts things into a vector, right? See um, what's going on, no, no, okay. C11, uh, one, one, you get this vector 11, one, one, okay? So this does the same thing, okay? It puts elements together, but in the context of a data frame. So when these elements are inside the data frame, okay, it just puts them together and it has, it also has to work, I think it has to, to, to be uh, used in conjunction with row-wise, okay? So if you're not using this with row-wise, it's not going to work. Um, so this basically just puts them together into a vector, okay, and gives this vector to mean. Because mean, if you look at um, if you look at mean, mean takes one element as a, an argument and and some more options, but this x here is a vector. So this needs to be inside a vector. This needs to be one thing. That gets fed to mean, okay, to your function, and the way to build this thing, this vector, is using C across, okay. So that's how you would do it. Um, now um, you could also do it using another function called row means. So row means, as the name implies, computes the means by row and does that. I think only. On a matrix, okay. It only does that on a matrix. So the way to do it uh, with um, the way to do it, I don't know what these null things are. I, I reinstalled. Um, I had to reinstall my computer. Uh, I didn't have to, but I did. And um, yeah, now I get some some issues with um, with uh, Emacs. But anyway. Now uh, I'm doing this um, the same thing without using row wise because I'm using row means and row means already works on a per row basis. So let me uh, call that um, yeah. So mean now I need across and I'm going to explain uh, the difference. Oh, uh, first of all, not mean but row means and I need across and I need start with same thing same stuff as before. Quarter, and I guess that's it. Uh, yep. So, what's the difference between uh, across and um, and C across? Across is basically um, telling row means that it needs to work 
only over the data frame. So Romins needs a whole data frame, a whole matrix. And across is saying, okay, take the data frame, uh, but only only the columns that, you know, that or only using the condition because it's more general than just using columns, only using the condition, in this case, columns that start with quarter. But it could also be something like, um, for example, if here was a real date and not a double or an integer in this case, you could say something uh, across is uh, numeric. So you would just apply the function over all the numeric columns. Okay, So you wouldn't need to use start, suite, etc. Um, so, so that's how you would do it using row means. Okay, so all three um, options are providing you with the result. But I think in this case, what you actually want is to have the data in a tidy format, and then uh, and then you compute your average. Now, um, this video is already fifteen minutes long, but let me show you. Uh, do I show you that? It's basically the same thing, but it's a situation. Yeah, maybe let me show you that anyway. Um, situation where you might want, situation where you might want and actually need to work on a per row basis is when you have um, a data set like the U Silk. So the U Silk. The, so the Silk is the um, is a is a survey uh, that uh, Eurostat. Uh, yeah, U Silk P. USLP. Is, a, is a survey that Eurostat uh, runs uh, every quarter, I think. Um, and uh, so they, they uh, randomly select people. Uh, so each national institute of every participating country, so basically the Euro so, no, the European Union even, so the European Union, so you select randomly some people and you ask them about their um, so social and economic uh, life. So it, I think the silk is a survey, how is it, living conditions, individual living conditions, something like that. So they ask you about your wages, they ask you about your home, do you live in a sanitary place, etc. Anyway, um, this, so the, there's a, an anonymized version in the Simpop package, which is, I think, quite uh, interesting. So because it allows us to look, I'm going to transform it as a table. It's a data frame, but I'm just going to um, transform it as a, as a table and we're going to look. Uh, you see that there's a lot of the columns. Columns that start with PY, which uh, HY, so PY are personal variables, HY are household uh, variables, and it's data from uh, Austria. So anyway. Maybe you want here to uh, select some of these variables, okay? Maybe you want to um, also there's there's more here on top. There's va variables about um, income, etc. Maybe you want to add all the variables uh, that are called py one hundred something, because maybe I, I don't remember if if it's exactly those, but it doesn't matter. But some of these variables are actually the income, your income. So basically, you will have income from your job, then income from whatever assets you own, then uh, maybe income because you're retired, but you also have a job. So, so each income is separated, right? In uh, so you have one variable per income. Maybe you want to add this together. So this is uh, this would be a situation where you actually just want really to select three variables, just add them together and really get this new variable, which you would call total income, for example. I think this is what this equivalized income variable is, um, but we could imagine that you don't have it and that you actually need to build it, right? So uh, this is where, this is one situation where you actually want to work on a per row basis. Of course, you could do well. If I need, you know, I, I just have this, I don't know, this tree. I think there's something wrong with the Emacs. Anyway, um, maybe you could say, well, okay, I just need to add three variables and I'm going to, to write total income and I'm just going to add them, you know, just going to do a P, uh, maybe let's go with P100 and then I'm just going to do P uh, this and then this, yeah, 120. So this is my total income and that's it. Fine. If you only have three variables, you can, of course, write that. It's going to work. If you have 30 variables, 50 variables, 120 variables, 
this will become very tedious. So this is where you might want to actually use. Uh, so maybe let's um, let's select. I think it's called ID and then total income just to take a look. And um, so yeah, so we're going to, to take a look at that. Now let's uh, try. Let's imagine we have three hundred of these variables and we want to have a solution that is not tedious. Uh, so we would do maybe this uh, row wise. So you could do row wise, or um, you could do the one. Well, in this case, row sums. I think there is a row sums. So maybe you could use row sums as well. Uh, but row wise, and then C across is much more gener uh, general uh, than this uh, solution with row means because there you need these factorized functions that you might not have depending on what you want to do. So I'm going to write total income. And I'm going to say that I need the, um, so what did I do? The sum C across, so it's the sum across variables that starts with uh, PY, so is it, yeah, PY, and then one, and uh, that's it. Yeah, and then I'm just going to select um, my columns. And I think I forgot the parentheses. Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, so you've seen it, it took... Um, yeah, I, I thought I had forgotten the parentheses because it took some time to run. So this is also something that I want to discuss, but now this video is already quite long. Actually, this row-wise uh, thing, it's quite slow. Um, it's slow because it's actually what it's doing. It's um, I think it's grouping your whole data frame by uh, a variable such that each row is an individual group, then it applies your function, and then it uh, ungroups your whole data frame. So uh, it takes it takes quite some time to, to run, and uh, and that's why it took a bit longer. But it works. It works, and it's very general. And I think it's very elegant as well. It's probably the most elegant way to do it. Uh, if you really have um, a very complicated function, arbitrary function, this is probably the most flexible and elegant way to do it. If you want to do something like um, like the mean by row, or maybe is there a row sums? I think there is. Yeah. If you want the the, the sums by row, then use row means and row sums using uh, across because this is much faster. And uh, finally, recognize when you are in a situation where you actually need that because maybe you are in the situation from before where you actually do not want to add this as a column. You just want. You, you just want to, to look at the average or you just want to, to look at the sum or whatever. And this is where it would be much more interesting to put the data in a tidy, in a tidy data frame and then do uh, whatever operation you need. So I hope you, you enjoyed this video. Um, I wanted to show you something else, but uh, maybe I'll do a little follow-up video shorter just on that because uh, this one is already quite long. So again, the script is in the description below. Look at the vignette of across and see across because I didn't show you anything that is not in there. So everything is in there. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Have a great weekend.